So I was talking to Meiru a couple weeks ago, and next thing I knew, she offered to make the entirety of Super Mario 3D World backwards. So of course I said yes, and since Meiru is so awesome, make sure to check out her channel and subscribe. So completely out of the blue, I'll be attempting this challenge and completing as many levels as I can backwards. The only changes made to the game are that we spawn at the end, flagpoles are at the beginning, and all the warp pipes, pipe cannons, and warp boxes are reversed. I'm allowed to use any power-ups I want, and any strategies with them are fair game. We're not counting any sort of mini-bosses either, only the main levels. So with all that said, let's get started. Right away, you'll probably notice I'm playing the Wii U version. I know, I know, how dare I? Here's the thing, modding is a lot easier on the Wii U, so that's why we went with this version. I don't think the additional speed boost is gonna help much with levels anyway. And speaking of, once we get to the checkpoint, I am hopelessly done for. The other half of the level is too high up and way too far away. I tried this with a few different characters, but didn't have any luck. The closest I got to the other side was with a cat momentum jump, but the issue is the death zone kill kills me, and even if I did make it to the other side, I wouldn't have enough stamina to climb all the way up. Koopa Troopa Cave was really simple, and something that's nice about Mount Beanpole is I'll be able to get cat suits here for free. If I need any backup, then I can just play this level over. Now, Plessy's Punching Falls was simply hilarious. Keep in mind that I did not request the camera to change besides removing the auto scroll and auto scrollers, so I had to drive Plessy while not being able to see where I was going. This made controlling Plessy super janky, but it doesn't last long since this level can't be done. You normally take this big ass jump at the end, and Plessy has no way of getting up there. I thought Switch Scramble Circus would be a breeze until I realized that a pipe shoots us to the end and there's no way to get across. Even the Captain Toad level spawn us at the end, just to see how it changes the gameplay. And for Captain Toad Goes Forth, it's significantly easier since we don't have to do as much climbing. Bowser's Highway Showdown's cutscene is fantastic because instead of entering the castle, Peach decides to leave. I mean, I don't blame her to be honest. The only notable thing to bring up is you do the Bowser fight really early on, but the level itself is easy. And that's it for World 1. So we'll move on to World 2 and see where that takes us. The beginning of Conkdor Canyon seemed tricky. The camera just doesn't move at all, so I had to figure out how to get up at this awkward angle. After some attempts, I discovered I could just use the catsuit to climb up this wall, and when the platforms moved, I could just jump off of that and then run back. To make things more interesting for Puff Pride Peaks, I decided to not use the touchscreen. The first jump was pretty far away, so I needed to pull off a cat momentum jump to get to the other side. What made this level so scary is that I can't see where to go. The camera does not move for me one bit. One of the scariest jumps is going to this platform near the cloud level. I had to jump really far and climb across the wall before I started falling. Once I got to the checkpoint, the scary jumps were gone and I was good to go. When it comes to Shadow Play Alley, Double Cherry Pass, and Battle Bowser's Bullet Bill Brigade, they were super easy. It's worth mentioning that the Piranha Plants loaded in after I passed them, which I thought was pretty humorous. For the underground part of Really Rolling Hills, I didn't think I'd be able to climb up this hill since it's really steep. But in Mario 3D World, the physics are super weird and you can just jump up most hills. I don't know why this works, but that wraps up World 2. For World 3, there isn't anything to say about Snowball Park, Chain Link Charge, Shifty Boo Mansion, Pretty Plaza Panic, Pipeline Lagoon, Captain Toad makes a splash, and the Bullet Bill Express. They're all beatable. I didn't think I'd be able to do Mount Mustache because of all the slants, but again, to my surprise, you can simply jump up and just hold forward. So I guess this applies to all the hills in the game. I did have to be careful to not get hit by the Biddy Buds, but 3-6 was much smoother than I expected. Almost the entirety of World 3 was possible backwards. Almost. For switchboard falls, there's a couple of switchboards on the bottom, but the other ones are way too high up for us to even get close. I tried using Cat Momentum with Luigi, but had no luck. I then tried it with Peach, and while I got farther, it didn't matter. I also tried climbing the waterfall, only to find out that you can't climb that. So this level definitely isn't happening. But now, on to World 4. To start things off, Spike's Lost City was possible with a cat suit, and Lava Rock Lair was painless. Ant Trooper Hill required some damage boosting at the beginning and a well-timed Cat Momentum jump, but otherwise, there's not much to mention. Piranha Creeper Creek's piranhas weren't the easiest to avoid, but if you're careful, then you can get around them. B-Block Skyway was by far the most fun I've had with the backwards level. Right at the beginning is this massive slope that we have to climb up, but of course, the platform switched to the music, so we have to time our jumps well, but also make sure we switch sides accordingly. <laughs> Now that's what I call gaming 43. Available in stores now. 
But now, let's talk about Big Bounce Byway. This is what you're really watching for. We've arrived at the first of our many Kaizo 3D World Challenges. Immediately, we come out of the warp box and almost fall to our death, only surviving by the tippy toes on the cloud. The mushroom platform is nowhere near us, and all we have nearby are bitty buds flying around. As you just saw, we can bounce off them to the halfway point, but that was just the beginning. I know there's more bitty buds to the left, but they're much farther away, so I tried jumping off the top of these brown bricks for more height, only to miss my jump by a good few feet. But I also didn't go very fast, so I kept on trying. And that's when I realized how time-consuming attempts were gonna be. When I died, I lost the Tanuki suits, so I had no choice but to go to another level to find another two suits and then go back to 4-4. It took me about two minutes to get Tanuki suits, and that extra time quickly added up. Maybe there was a faster method that I'm not aware of, but this is what I did whenever I needed the suit. I should also mention how bad the depth perception could be with Mario 3D World. There were tons of wasted attempts, all because I couldn't tell exactly where Luigi was on the screen. It eventually got to a point where I had played this level so much that I developed muscle memory for where I was supposed to be. With Luigi, jumping off the brown bricks got me much farther than with Peach, but the issue was that I wasn't able to build up enough speed. Which, I mean, duh, I'm trying to build speed on two tiny blocks, you're not meant to ever do that. But I started to get more comfortable with building speed, and then the issue arose of me spinning by accident. So it came down to me running on the very edge of the bricks to build up the fastest speed. If I could just do that, I could probably get to that next bitty butt, but it was so goddamn precise. I gave up on that idea and decided to just go full blast on the actual platform. And that allowed me to get a tiny bit farther, but never high enough to bounce off the bitty butt. Looking back on this level, Cat Momentum might have also worked for this, but that would have been just as difficult to pull off, if not harder. I tried this a few more times, and no matter how good my jump was, I was always too low to bounce off the bitty bud. I went back to my brick strategy, managed to actually build speed for a full run, but accidentally jumped too early for that momentum to carry over. That death was pretty tragic. So I had no choice but to pull out the Wii U Pro Controller and use a second character for help. My strategy was basically the same. Jump as far as I can with a Tanuki suit, but then switch characters at the last second and reach the end that way. The only issue was my runway was more limited since I was holding Peach, but on my first try, I actually overshot my throw so I knew that this could be done. So I jumped for it once again, let go of Peach, hit the first bitty butt, yes! But I lost too much speed, so I fell right to the bottom. But then, this happened. Oh yeah! Now that's what I'm talking about. I'm pleased to say that the level was actually possible despite all odds. So let's move on to World 5. So Captain Toad plays Peekaboo, Backstreet Bustle, Bob Ohm's Blow, Cakewalk Flip, Searchlight Sneak, Coin Express, and King Kathunk's Castle were all super easy. Sunshine Seaside is partially a plusy level, but since we're going backwards, we start with that part and then get stuck from a high wall. There was one somewhat hard jump at the beginning of Tricky Trapeze Theater, but of course I can't make progress due to the lack of the zipline. And for Sprawling Savannah, I'm blocked from using the Pipe Cannon. Not much interesting to point out in World 5, so on to World 6 next. Clear Pipe Cruise, Spooky Sea Week Wreck, Hands on Hall, Bullet Bill Base, and Bowser's Bob and Brigade was more than possible. At Typhoo Flurries, I thought I was going to be stuck for a long time with this line of Typhoo, but I switched to Toad and just built up a lot of speed. As soon as I could go, I ran up the hill and by the very hair managed to avoid all the gust. Moving to Deep Jungle Drift. <laughs> And finally, for Fuzzy Time Mine, we can't outmatch the fuzzies. Things start to get really interesting now that we're moving into World Castle. Fort Fire Bros, Simmering Lava Lake, and Captain Toad gets thwomped were a piece of cake. With Switch Black Ruins, I can't reach all the question mark spaces to open the wall, and there's an invis wall way up at the top. Then with Trick Trap Tower, I'm stuck due to a lack of a zip line once again. And with Rammerhead Reef, a gust of water wouldn't let me pass. I tried using a Lucky Bell, and that actually got me to the bottom, but I wasn't able to swim through the gust fast enough. But things are about to get spicy. Red Hot Run is already a pretty hard level, but it might not seem that bad to play backwards. But that's where you'd be wrong, because again, the camera is facing the wrong way. So that means I have to somehow make my way across these platforms without seeing where
where I'm going half the time, with tons of speed boost, without falling and going fast enough since there's only 100 seconds on the clock. This was so painfully unfun. I don't even know where to begin. The first 15 minutes was just learning the route and trying to build muscle memory, because that was going to be my only option with this godforsaken camera. I learned that the best way to slow down the speed boost was to ground pound a few times in place. This worked really well, but the problem is that I don't have very much time. I eventually made it to the end, only to remember that a pipe cannon shoots us to this area, which means this is probably impossible. I decided to jump anyway, and as I started to fall, the pipe cannon popped up and I just groaned. This might be possible with a tanuki suit, which means I have to keep playing this level. And look, it's not that I don't mind the challenge. In fact, that's what makes these videos so fun to make and watch. What I don't like is making blind jumps and not being able to see where I'm going. After several tries, I got to the end with a tanuki suit and completely flubbed the jump. That was really annoying, but I kept going to find that I made it much farther that time, which is a good sign. I played this level so many times that even without seeing half the time, I had figured out exactly where to go consistently so I wouldn't die and get hit, and would also still have enough time left at the end. Another attempt at this jump, it was much higher than last time, but I still wasn't quite high enough to reach the pipe. So I thought Luigi would do the trick, and unfortunately, he covered about the same distance as Peach did. So of course, I brought in a second character so I could try throwing Peach into the pipe, only to realize how obnoxious this was going to be. Peach needed to be in a bubble or the camera would focus on her for whatever reason. After several more attempts, I went for a jump which was a bit early, then let go of Peach and even still, I couldn't reach the pipe. I know I wasn't perfectly accurate on that attempt, but the fact that I wasn't high enough after that still boggles my mind. So I just said, screw it. I gave Peach a Tanuki tail and tried again. It was a great jump this time. So I threw Peach and, for some reason, she didn't gain height. What, did, did I throw her too late? Does this not work when Peach has the Tanuki suit? I have no idea. I thought it might have just been a fluke. So I tried the jump again, and Peach didn't get a height boost just like last time. I tried throwing her way earlier, and still, I had had no success. What the hell is happening? I feel like this is rigged somehow. Another attempt in with an insanely good jump, but it just wasn't good enough to reach the pipe. I tried one more time without using the speed boost, thinking that maybe that was the problem. But once again, Peach didn't get any height from my throw. So I just gave up after that. If it's possible, then you let me know. I didn't try cat momentum because I knew that wouldn't be enough distance or height to get across. Boiling Blue Belly Belt's first jump requires a super precise cat momentum, and I'm kind of surprised I caught it on the first try. After that is a lot of really careful jumps since the ground keeps coming in and out of the lava. None of these jumps aren't feasible, but I had to be so careful to not make any mistakes, or it'd make everything way harder without the cat suit. But folks, we aren't done with World Castle yet. We have one more level to talk about, and this one is one hell of a doozy. Bowser's Lava Lake Keep may not seem so bad at first. You fight Bowser at the beginning, and just move on after that. Proceeding through the warp box is where the real fun begins. If you don't have a cat suit, you aren't standing a chance against this jump. It's definitely doable, but the suit is 100% required. On my next try, I made the jump, and while it was scary, I had plenty of time to pull myself up and survive. I did get hit by the spikes, but it seemed like it wouldn't matter that much. These jumps across the lava balls are absolutely terrifying, but you can avoid getting hit at least. But that's not where the problem is. Near the end, you usually have to make a bridge fall down with a switch. Of course, since I'm playing backwards, the bridge is still standing up tall, and I have no way of getting around the bridge. So what that means is I have to get through this level with a cat suit and somehow climb my way around the bridge and survive. I have to fight Bowser without getting hit in order to use my cat suit, so that way if I do get hit after that jump, I'll have a backup suit for the ending. And hey, maybe this doesn't sound that hard, but the nerves get to you when this whole process takes so long. And no, I couldn't use my gamepad to make this fight easier. I didn't have access to the gamepad. Eventually, I got through the fight without getting hit and barely avoided the Hammer Bros hammer so I could move on. I just about had a stroke avoiding this lava ball, by the way. That was way too close. And guess what? Nerves got to me and I got hit anyway. Slowly but surely, though, I made my way to the end, only realizing I can't even get a good running start with this jump and I have one go at it. And I must remind you, I cannot turn the camera and see where I'm supposed to aim. But I ran in a circle, waited for the spikes to move, made my jump, slowly started to turn towards the stage, and just like that, I was able to barely get across and climb my way around. I cannot believe this was possible. That took a lot of composure to keep myself together. But it is done, and we can move on to World Bowser after that big triumph.
World Bowser is much less dramatic, as Spiky Spike Bridge, Cookie Cogworks, Footlight Lane, and the Bowser Train Express is possible. Unfortunately, there's a long string of levels that couldn't be completed, including Plessy's Dune Downhill due to there being no ground for Plessy to leap to. Deepwater Dungeon had Plessy blocked by a wall, and a beam in the dark can't be done since we can't reach the doorway up top. Grumblump Inferno's Grumblump blocks aren't in our sight, and last but not least is the final boss, the Great Tower of Bowserland. This can't be done because there's no zip line, but it's definitely worth worth checking out. Normally, you fight off a bunch of Meowsers at the end, but now you just get a bunch of clones that are all going the wrong way. We all knew Bowser wasn't the brightest, but Meowser takes it a step further. But now we've moved on to World Star, and Rainbow Run starts with a really hard jump at the beginning, until I realized I was overcomplicating it by a lot. And believe it or not, the Plessy section can technically be completed. The only problem is I can't hit the checkpoint or go into the warp box, and I also have no way of getting off Plessy, so this level's done for. With that said, however, Super Galaxy, Super Blackland, and Captain Toad Takes a Spin were a breeze. Rolling Ride Run could also be done, and it was actually really fun. I needed to do a pretty tight cat momentum jump to clear this gap while not getting hit by Conk Door. then the rest of the stage was basically staying as high up as I could to avoid tricky gaps. It was an exhilarating one to complete. With Peepa's Fog Bog, the River of Poison extends way too far out for us to reach the next platform, and then Cosmic Cannon Cluster has no lift or platforms, or any semblance of a chance. The the Great Goal Pole was really interesting, because I was spawned at the very end where the Goal Pole can reach to, so that meant I needed to find a way to get back to the beginning as quickly as possible. As you'd probably guess, the fastest method I could muster was using Cat Momentum with Toad. I was able to get pretty far, but not quite far enough to reach the flagpole. So thanks to some help and suggestions from the Mario 3D World speedrunning Discord, they said I should try it with Luigi since his jumps are higher and better. And while he didn't move much faster than Toad and I wasn't crouch jumping, he was able to clear bigger gaps. This was the best I could muster. One mother fudget second. Holy sh- Whoa. That was a close call. But hot damn, we aren't done yet as Honeycomb Starway is another story. Since we removed the auto-scrolling, that means I can attempt the level as if it were normal, but the camera is still top down. And worse, this blue stuff is blue lava, so that's not fun to touch. The platforms usually come in as you get close to them, but since I'm on the opposite side, I don't really get that luxury. I tried jumping to see if I could spawn one in, and not only did I find a platform, but I discovered the bees. The bees in which I can jump off of for extra height. So with my cat suit, I did a cat momentum jump, and lo and behold, I found even more bees and another platform that I could potentially land on. With much better cat momentum this time, I managed to bounce off a bee and actually land on that platform. That's freaking cool and all, but I'm kind of stuck again. And the fire piranhas are spamming a ton of fire as well. I had no idea what to do, so I did another jump, and of course, I found another platform. But this one is way farther away and seemed much more unreachable. I tried jumping on the plant and was glad to be able to reach it, which gave me a few more ideas. With Peach, I tried to jump again, and while I was able to get much farther, I didn't get the height that I needed to climb up. Several more tries later, I bounced off both of these plants to see if that would help me get height, and while it did, I lost too much speed. And look, I know I was going the wrong way, but it wouldn't have made much of a difference. And that's when I decided I was going to use the cat and tanuki suit in tandem. I'd use the cat suit to get to the first platform, and then the tanuki for the other one. And while admittedly, I didn't go super fast on this try, I was still falling way too quickly to reach the platform. Form. So I tried the same strategy with Luigi, and guess what? I floated into the starry sky of doom. Big, big surprise. But silly me, I was trying to bounce on the wrong side, and this time I was getting a lot closer to that platform. And let's play that death back. I purposefully went for that B because I realized I could use it for an additional jump. So I switched back to Peach and the attempts were on. Unfortunately, I didn't have a B near me, so I wasn't able to give my idea a fair try. Next time, however, there were a few Bs, which gave me a glimmer of hope. But I was going in the wrong direction, and I ended up missing my target on one of the bounces anyway. And then this came next. Oh my god, I am astounded that actually worked. 
That alone was an accomplishment pulling off. And I hate to say it, but there are no other platforms for me to go to next. And there's no enemies close by to jump off. That's really too bad considering all the effort I just put in. But there's one more crazy level to talk about in World Star, and that is Gargantuan Grotto. This is another level with a water gust that requires a lucky bell. I figured I'd get stuck again just like last time, but I was actually able to swim just fast enough to beat out the current and keep going. At the checkpoint, I ran into what seemed to be a dead end. There were a bunch of great blocks above me with no way to get through, except I noticed a tiny hole that Luigi would be able to fit through. Reaching this hole was a problem because the wall was so short that I couldn't grab it. I figured a cat momentum jump could get me there easily, but it's just short of grabbable. So when I jumped to this wall, I delayed my cat dive so I could cover more distance, and that managed to do the trick. I thought it was all good and dandy, up until I found another hole in an even worse spot. I simply could not jump off the wall and up. The hole was just too far away for that to work. It was quickly sinking in that I was gonna have to do this again with more characters. So that's what I did, and just my luck, this jump wasn't high enough. Even when I jumped with Rosalina, it still didn't work. But I'm not giving up yet because I am way too stubborn. I do the level again with three characters and a little help from Chari 5. I simply cannot bounce all three characters at once by myself, so we helped control one of them. Within 10 seconds, we line up everything and actually make our way up to the top. Chari 5 coming in clutch. Thank you so much and you should go check out his channel by the way. I have it linked down below. Whew, that was a bit intense, but World Mushroom was a bit of a breather. Night falls on really rolling hills, Spiky Mountain Beanpole, Trouble in Shadow Play Alley, and Gigantic Seasick Wreck are all possible with no problems. Deep Black Jungle Drift is another big nope, and back to hands on hall stairs don't open up so you can't get through. Now I am stoked to talk about Broken Blue Bully Belt, because I cannot believe the things I managed to do. What makes this one so hard is the limited amount of rising and falling platforms. Not only do they rise and fall, but they're not safe to stand on for more than two to three seconds. So I had the crazy idea of landing midway through the cycle with cat momentum, and on my first attempt, I actually caught really close. Since I can't move the camera, I'm literally making blind jumps and praying I land in the right spot. Eventually, I got a really good jump in and actually landed. Stunned by that happening, I make my way back, and things are looking grim as I don't get enough distance to safety. What I basically have to do is a perfect blind jump, but also time the cycle so I have more time to build speed. And this is made harder without being able to move the camera. But then I decided to try it with a tanuki. God gamer alert. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to say it, but we're sounding the alarms because we have a god gamer alert here. Now I just have to get to the checkpoint, which I do, and I never have to do that part ever, ever again. We're not quite out of this mess yet, as the rest of these jumps are also super precise and the cycle goes against us. Thankfully, messing up is no longer a big deal because since we've got the checkpoint, we can just grab another Tanuki suit and keep trying. As long as I time the cycle properly, the jumps were manageable. Eventually, I got myself across this section, and after that, it wasn't too bad. And with all that done, Mushroom 7 is finished, and that is a freaking miracle. Miracle. But now onto our last big world, which is World Flower. With Piranha Creeper Creek After Dark, Faster Fort Fire Bros, Sprawling Savannah Rabbit Run, Shiftier Boom Mansion, Pipeline Boom Lagoon, Blast Block Skyway, Towering Sunshine Seaside, Spiky Spike Bridge Sneak, and Boss Blitz all being very easy. Switch Shock Circus doesn't have a zip line, and Floating Fuzzy Time Mine has a problem with the fuzzies again. Honeycomb Skyway brings us back to a level that I am not happy to see again. But alas, I try the same strategies as before, and I even have clear pipes to use as additional help. So I avoid the hell out of this fireball, then bounce off this fire plant, and I'm about to miss the platform until another comes in and saves me at the last second. After that, I do a big jump, and I'm baffled to find a clear pipe so close that I can land on it. After that is another clear pipe, and shockingly, I don't have any more hard jumps. The rest of this stage is already fully built, so I just walk up to the flag and actually beat this. That is amazing. To wrap things up, Captain Toad's fiery finale alley is easy of course, but let's get into Champions Road. Now this one is impossible because pipe cannons take you to each individual section, but I know everyone is curious if you could beat this backwards. So Mabel went ahead and added warp boxes just so we can test that. The hardest part is still this speed boost section, simply because we can't see where to go. The lasers come into frame so quickly that it's hard to react to without getting hit. The water segment isn't all that more difficult. The timing is a little tighter, but you can still get through it. And honestly, that 
that's all that's worth mentioning. You can get to the end with the warp boxes, but it's not as hard as you would imagine it being. Out of all the levels, 27 out of 95 were possible, so around 28% couldn't be done. I was a little unsure if these levels would make for an interesting backwards video, but it turns out quite a few of them required precise movement and tricks. So that leaves me quite satisfied, and I hope you are too, and thanks a bunch for watching. I'll speak with you all very soon, and until next time.